to loose the seals of this book. So our Lord Yahweh Shah had to be made a sacrifice for us to even qualify for salvation. And this is what we read here again. It says, she have killed her beast. See, she have mingled her wine. She have also furnished her table. Yeah, and this table here being a metaphor for the scriptures. Now all things are ready. <laughs> Verses 2,000 years ago, well, they was pretty much reading from the Old Testament only. Basically, they was eating the trimmings, the side dish. <laughs> Why? Because the main course, being the lamb, wasn't yet prepared. But now we have this book in its entirety. And this is what it means when the scripture says, she have also furnished her table. See? Verse 3, she have sent forth her maidens. <laughs> she have sent forth her maidens. She cried for upon the highest places of the city. Yeah, and these maidens here would be symbolic to the prophets. Which when you consider the maidens and their role, especially in relation to this house, where they were sent forth to serve. Well, that's the case with the prophets. That's the lot of the men that you see bringing forth this word. <laughs> the Lord raised us up and sent us forth to serve you. So we labor not for ourselves only, but for the believers as well. Which brings me to this lesson, which is going to be centered around the book of Ecclesiastes, the 33rd chapter. And starting at the 17th verse, it says, Consider that I labored not for myself only, but for all them that seek learning. Yeah, let's read this again. It says, Consider that I labored not for myself only, which by the way, this labor comes with a reward. And that's pursuant to the book of Hebrews, the 6th chapter, and the 10th verse, where the Heavenly Father pretty much reassured us that he is not unrighteous to forget our works and labor of love. See? Again, it says, Consider that I labor not for myself only, but for all them that seek learning. And this will apply to those of you out there who sincerely inquire your power. Those of you who desire to know the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through His Son, Yahweh Shah, which is presented in the form of this doctrine. And if that's the case, then this would mean that the reward that will be given to the laborers will also apply to you. <laughs> you will benefit from the laboring of the prophets, man. Matter of fact, let's go there. This is the book of Matthew, the 10th chapter, and starting at the 40th verse. It says, He that receiveth you, receiveth me. And he that receiveth me, receiveth him that sent me. He that receiveth a prophet, in the name of a prophet, yeah, meaning those of you who receive the men whom Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah has sent in his name, all right? Again, he that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. <laughs> See? Shall receive a prophet's reward. And he that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man, and that righteous man, again, being our Lord Yahweh Shah, because that's who we come in the name of, right? It says, shall receive a righteous man's reward. See that? So by believing this report, then you are actually qualified now to receive the reward of those who convey the report. <laughs> See? In which that reward will ultimately be manifested in the form of salvation. <laughs> and that can be proven when you go right here to the book of 1 Timothy, the 4th chapter in the 16th verse. It says, Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine continue in them. Yeah, and this once again proves the importance of subscribing to the right form of teaching. See, again it says, Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. See, continue in them for in doing this thou shalt both save <laughs> thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. See? And this again proves that, you know, furthering and advancing his gospel, faithfully teaching his word, and on the flip side, believing on that report will ultimately save your life. And not only that, 
this also proves that we are not laboring for ourselves alone, but for those who hear us. And that labor is an effort to save our souls, to save our life. Which that applied to the time of Noah <laughs> as well. All right, the building of the ark, the laboring of Noah was an effort to save his life. And not only his life, but those of his household. <laughs> and that's outlined right here. In the book of Hebrews, the 11th chapter and the 7th verse, it says, By faith, Noah being warned of the Most High of things not seen as yet, <laughs> yeah, which will fall under the banner of prophecy, right? It says, moved with fear, prepared an ark. Yeah, meaning Noah proceeded to build. He began to labor. Now let's see if he was only laboring for himself. It says, to the saving of his house. <laughs> it says, to the saving of his house. And we mentioned earlier in this sitting how that house, in relation to the time we are in now, is symbolic to this gathering. See? Those of you who believe us, who was called and chosen to dwell within the courts of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh which we mentioned that a house pretty much symbolizes protection. See? So the men that you see laboring, as in the days of Noah, is an effort to not only save themselves, but their house. See? And that will apply to those of you believers who are present in this hearing. See, again, it says, by faith, Noah, being warned of the most high of things not seen as yet, <laughs> moved with fear, prepared an ark, or in other words, began to labor, to the saving of his house. <laughs> See? By the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. See that? So again, this ministry and pretty much the overtone of it in this dynamic, if you will, between teacher and student. You know, the prophets of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah conveying the words of the Heavenly Father through His Son to you believers. It's a labor, you know, which ultimately the reward for that labor is salvation. And that labor is not only for ourselves, but for those of you who believe on that report. So y'all just wanted to touch on that. Lord willing, it was edifying. Till the next time I say, Shalom.